Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. The head of a missing San Antonio woman identified in Louisiana. We have more on the technology used to identify her. And the surge of travel this holiday weekend, what you need to know before taking off. And outside with live cam, lots of plans this weekend for a lot of folks as school is wrapping up. Folks taking a long holiday weekend as things finally get closer to being normal here in the world we live in. Good morning, everybody. We made it to Friday. It is May 28th. Happy Friday and to many of you the beginning of a long weekend. Let's see how it's looking weather wise. Mike has been hinting all week at a chance of showers and storms, at least on the early part of the weekend. Well, we you know, there may be a shower or two each and every day this weekend. I think a little bit better chance maybe tomorrow. I don't for Sunday and Monday. I really wouldn't change your your outdoor plans with a few of those showers tonight. We're gonna have to watch out though for some showers and thunderstorms started uh, kind of hinting at this yesterday. There were some indications and uh, we'll talk more about that in a second. Boy, that picture looks Looks the same as it did yesterday and the day before that and the day before that temperatures are actually up a little bit compared to yesterday. We are at 76 right now. We'll drop down a couple of degrees here, but we're going to stay fairly steady cloud cover and all that humidity is helping to keep these temperatures up there. Mold did come down and uh, now well, it's probably going to get a nice boot maybe tonight to tomorrow, but next week we'll more on that coming up as well. Now, as far as tonight, though, there is the chance for some of these storms to be strong to severe marginal risk for most of our area, and that gets bumped up a little bit out in some of our western counties. High winds and hail are going to be the uh, biggest threats with this. So here's what's going on today for the first part of the day. This morning is going to be like every other day. You know, if there's a sprinkle out there, don't be surprised at it. There's nothing on radar. It'd be very light. 73 degrees. And then later on today, I think we keep a few more clouds around. Going for 88, hit 89 yesterday. And a shower or two, thunderstorms going to try and start to pop up, especially up to the north. Then we get into the evening hours, and that's going to be some of the better chances for rain. Get more specific on these rain chances. Temperatures are also not going to be too awfully hot for the unofficial start of summer. So that's some really good news. Details in just a couple of minutes. Mark. Thank you, Mike. New this morning, San Antonio police searching for a man. They say stabbed a woman multiple times last night. Happened just after midnight in the 1200 block of Culebra. It's on the west side of town, not too far from Woodlawn Lake. We're told a woman was walking down the street when she was approached by a man in his 20s who police say solicited her for sex. Police say she tried to run from him, but he caught up to her and stabbed her. Then he ran off. The woman was taken to a hospital in critical condition. And dental records show the head of a woman recently found in Louisiana belongs to a San Antonio woman who vanished more than three years ago. So this is a photo that police released in their search for 58 year old Sally Hines back in December of 2017. She was last seen at her northwest side home. At the time, police mentioned she suffered a medical condition and her family described it as dementia. Now we're told her head was found then in March of 2018, a head in Louisiana. The following year, a lab at LSU released a computer generated facial reconstruction. Investigators say a person went through pictures to try and see if they matched the sketch. And yesterday it was confirmed that the remains belong to Heinz. We now have new details on a shooting that happened on the city's east side earlier this week. San Antonio police say the man killed in the 1500 block of Upland Road on Monday was dragged and then shot in the head. The affidavit says 24 year old Delon Weaver was living with the suspect 26 year old Keith Corley's ex girlfriend. When Corley found out Weaver was at the woman's apartment, police say he showed up, went inside and talked to them. After a few minutes, the two men went outside and began arguing. And that's when police say Corley drank, dragged Weaver down the stairs and shot him. Corley then ran to his vehicle and took off. He was later arrested and now waits in the Bear County Jail, uh, is in the Bear County Jail on a murder charge. A memorial dedicated to those who lost their lives from COVID-19 currently stands downtown. It's called Deep in Our Hearts and is made up of more than 3,400 hearts. While some left flowers, others left photos and messages in honor of their loved ones. The memorial site at the corner market in South Alamo Street will be available to the public for about a month. And now that the holiday travel surge is beginning, Americans are racing to escape. More confident than ever that the worst of the pandemic is now behind us. ABC's Andrew Dibber tells us restrictions are being eased everywhere, setting the stage for a more normal holiday weekend. This morning, Americans gearing up for the unofficial start to summer, hitting the beach, the roads, and the skies. This is our first time traveling since last year, February. 
We're going to New York for a wedding and we're really excited about it. In fact, at least 37 million people are expected to travel this weekend, the largest number in more than a year. It seems like it's back to normal. Officials across the country are working tirelessly to make sure the pandemic can't stop the party. Go, get vaccinated, hit the beach. Mobile vaccine sites are setting up camp at some of the country's most popular beaches. We had an opportunity, we got vaccinated and we came down. While travelers passing through airports are being offered the single dose Johnson & Johnson vaccine before they fly. Super easy, super fast, super convenient. This year, strikingly different than what Memorial Day brought in 2020. With more than half of all adults in the U.S. now vaccinated, there's little fear of a repeat surge. If you've been fully vaccinated, then you can and should feel a lot safer about gathering this holiday weekend. And for those who haven't had their shot, states are starting to roll out increasingly extravagant incentives. California announced $116 million in rewards, the biggest program in the country, including $15 million to be split amongst 10 vaccinated residents. Meanwhile, CVS launched its own sweepstakes. The newly vaccinated could win a trip to the Super Bowl or a week-long cruise. I would encourage anyone to get the vaccine. If winning a million dollars isn't incentive enough, I don't really know what would be. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. To our other big headlines this morning, Republican senators delaying passage of a bill that will increase American competitiveness with China. This means a vote on a bill to form a commission to investigate the January 6th Capitol breach has also been delayed until later today. Once the U.S. Innovation and Competition Act has been voted on, the Senate then would move on to the January 6th commission bill. For that bill to move forward, at least 60 Republican senators will have to vote yes. And time now is 436 and about 76 degrees right now. So head on GMSA, get your popcorn ready. A big weekend at the box office. We haven't said that in a long time. I know. We'll take a look <laughs> at some of the new flicks actually hitting the big screen. And it's also a bittersweet day for us here at KSET 12. It's Paul Venema's last day. He's had a huge impact on so many of us here. So after the break, we're going to hear from a few of the lives that he touched. We're sprinkling in those memories of Paul uh, throughout the entire day here on KSAT and our newscast. Look for more on that. And Paul's going to be live on GMSA at 9, so we hope you can come back for that a little bit later on. Right now, outside with live cam, the Memorial Day weekend forecast still to come. Uh, we love that. Today is Paul Venema's last day here at KSAT 12. It's going to be an emotional day. And this morning on GMSA, we are celebrating his long career. So here's veteran photographer Larry Burns and a few other familiar faces you may recognize to talk about what Paul meant to them. Hey, Paul, just wanted to wish you a wonderful retirement. I have a few friends here that you might be familiar with. Hey, Paul. Hey, Paul. Hey, Paul. Hey, happy retirement, Paul. And it was great working with you. And uh, I wish you the best in retirement and everything. And a real quick story. One of my favorite moments was when we were at the Alamo Dome and they were uh, dedicating the time capsule that was gonna go into the Alamo Dome and there was all kinds of memorabilia and everything that was in there. And I thought it was really classy that while everyone uh, had the, 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 the open box there, you took your business card from KSAT 12 and you flicked it in there. And so your business card is still in the time capsule of the Alamo Dome. I thought that was really awesome. Classy move, Paul. Very, very good. And I'll never forget the time we had the shakes. But uh, it's kind of a long story, but Paul and I once had the shakes. And um, the other thing that people didn't know about Paul was we'd get through with the story about 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Paul would run to his desk to what everybody thought was do some more, uh, I guess, news snooping on the phone. But he would really go to the desk, dial up IFB, and watch MASH until he had to go home. So, sorry to reveal your secret, Paul, but it's out now. <laughs> we love you, Paul. You're always a great guy, always. And Paul, it's been 30 years since I got to work with you, but I enjoyed it then. I tell the story of getting to go meet Willie on the bus with you. And uh, thank you for that experience as well. Yep. Happy uh, retirement. <laughs> yep. And I will echo the Willie story because we did the one where he was having his tax problems and he was making a movie along with an album to generate some cash to pay the bill. And I just had a great time that day. And I've always enjoyed working with you. And we love you. Enjoy retirement. And we hope to see you many, many times down the road. Love you, man. Bye. See you later. Adios, Paul. Bye, Paul. Never dare, Chief. <laughs>
and we are all going to miss Paul. We are, again, retirement day, and the guys you just saw, that's about 400 years worth of television experience. <laughs> Com most, combined. Mo most of them, I, I know three of those four, and they were, they're were they all photographers or former photographers in the news biz here at KSAT and sometimes at other stations as well. But uh, again, we hail Paul Venema throughout the day today here on GMSA. And for now, it's 442 and about 76 degrees. There's some very important recalls you need to know about 12 on your side coming up after the break. In this morning's GMA First Look, bracing for summer shortages. When temperatures go up, so does sales of air conditioning units. But this increase in demand goes way beyond seasonal spikes. There's the fear that this could be like toilet paper and, and paper towels last last spring. Many air conditioning manufacturers point to COVID-related production slowdowns, a worldwide shortage of semiconductors, and even the Texas freeze that has copper and plastic piping supplies facing unprecedented demand. Keep your fingers crossed the AC you have will keep working. It may be a long time before you can get a replacement unit or perhaps even the parts for the ones that you have. So how can you get around the supply chain crunch? We'll have the expert advice you need, even if you already own an AC. It's all coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Becky Worley, ABC News, Oakland, California. We have some product recalls to tell you about. First of importance to parents, thousands of strollers could put babies in danger. 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz with more on why millions of clothing steamers are also being recalled this morning as well. Parrot Alert, Ergo Baby is recalling thousands of its strollers. These are Metris models. The strollers pose a choking danger because the button on the harness release can break. Stop using it and contact the company. HSN, formerly the Home Shopping Network, is recalling more than 5 million handheld clothing steamers. More than 100 people have been badly burned by hot spraying or leaking water. They're the Joy, JM, My Little Steamer, and the Go Mini. They were sold online and at major retailers. IKEA is recalling 148,000 bowls, plates, and cups, the Heroistic and Telrica lines. They can break when heated and hot food can leak. Take them back. Nearly 800,000 folding chairs and bar stools sold at Walmart are recalled. This involves various styles sold under the Mainstay brand name. Several injuries have been reported after the leg welding broke. Contact Cheyenne Products for a refund. And slippery when wet, Target is recalling 58,000 room essentials shower stools. They can become unstable and people have been hurt. You can take these back to the store and get your money back. For more information on all of these recalls, we've put that on our website, kset.com. Marilyn Moritz, KSET 12 News. Uh, the Memorial Day weekend is finally here. We just have to get through a work day on this yep. Friday. Yeah, and we're going to stay in the 80s for the most part. Yes, uh, I don't even think we're going to make it as warm today as we did yesterday. Yesterday got back to 89 degrees, yeah, but I okay. think we have a few more clouds hanging around here today. And then temperatures are still going to be kind of dropping down uh, mid and lower 80s going in toward Monday, going in toward the middle of next week. So, yeah, it, it's going to be a nice weekend. Plus, you know, things are opening back up, which is so nice. And here's a great picture from a couple of days ago. Great sunset. Thank you very much, Elena, out there in Bandera. And um, maybe a couple of showers here and there over the weekend, but I don't think it's going to be a washout for, for most folks. So starting off this morning, it is uh, very warm, very humid. I mean, temperatures and humidity are up a little bit compared to the past couple of days. 75 Castorville, Helotus, uh, low mid 70s for these are dew point temperatures, by the way. This is just, I mean, wet towel kind of humidity with those dew points up to 75 there in Castorville and Helotus. Then we've got a little more moisture aloft in the atmosphere. This is the water vapor imagery. Looks at the moisture up there in the mid upper levels of the atmosphere. So I think this is going to help out with a few more clouds around today, maybe trimming temperatures a degree or two as we uh, go into this afternoon. Here's the computer model. This is that rapid update model, which uh, is doing a pretty good job, I think, with the what's going to be happening tonight. So we have a mixture of sunshine and clouds, again, leaning maybe toward the cloudier side today. And then this evening, we're going to start to see some of these showers and thunderstorms develop, some out uh, coming off the mountains of Mexico and then also up here to the north. So this is by dinner time. One or two showers scattered about the area. They'll start to fill in a little bit more as we go into the evening hours and some of those thunderstorms on top of that. And this is going to be the case in through 
the late evening and overnight hours with some of these uh, showers and thunderstorms. Looks like another cluster may try and develop and there could be some hefty downpours with some of these as well. And this will be going on through the early morning hours tomorrow. A little bit of break in the action. Then I think we see a few more showers uh, here and there, refiring showers, even a thunderstorm later on in the day. Now, as far as I beg your pardon. I have the tomorrow graphic up here. The today graphic, we have the marginal risk covering most all of the uh, area and then the slight risk, a little higher risk out here to the west. And this is going to be for tonight. And this is for uh, showers and some thunderstorms. Some may become strong to severe. And that's going to be with high winds and hail being the biggest threats from that. And then there's going to be some localized heavy downpours. And again, with the ground pretty well saturated, uh, it's Flooding issues, at least in you know the usual low lying spots, is not going to be very hard to come by. 83 degrees at noon today, mostly cloudy skies. And again, I think we keep a fair amount of clouds around today. A couple of showers late in the day, especially up to the north. 88 for a high temperature. Showers and thunderstorms overnight tonight, with that uh, little cluster developing overnight and early tomorrow morning. Uh, a couple of them throughout the day tomorrow. Sunday and Monday, I think are going to be good days. Uh, a shower or two is going to pop up here and there. Not a big deal as far as rain is concerned. Don't be surprised by it. But then rain chances are going to be going up as we go into the middle part of next week. And temperatures, well, right now, normal high is 90. The average. We're going to be in the low 80s by uh, the middle of next week. What a treat. So, yeah, overall, I think a nice weekend. We're just going to have to watch out for some of those storms tonight. And, uh, you know, a shower or two here and there. And we will. Thanks to you guys. Appreciate it, Mike. 451 on your Friday morning. And there's a whole lot going on in Hollywood. We're going to tell you what you need to know in the world of entertainment. That's after the break. But first, your lottery numbers. Pick 3061 Fireball 2. Daily four number 7357 Fireball 7. Cash 5, 6, 14, 20, 22, 26. And your Texas two-step 2, 13, 24, 35. Bonus ball 19. new opportunities. Ever wonder where the 101 Dalmatians villain Cruella de Vil got her hatred for spotted dogs? We get answers in the new Disney movie Cruella out today. And director Craig Gillespie tells me that after watching, he thinks you won't see Cruella as one dimensional. I love taking outside as a like misinterpreted people and misfits and figuring out like, like how did they arrive to the place that they're, they are. And it's not that I'm, I'm trying to be sympathetic necessarily, it's more empathetic. Cruella is out now in theaters and streaming on Disney Plus, where you'll have to pay extra to see it. Oh also out today, A Quiet Place Part 2 is only in theaters. I dream to be an actor. The third and final season of the Emmy-nominated comedy The Kaminsky Method is now on Netflix. Miss Lady Hawk herself! And Sunday night on HBO, it's the finale of the critically acclaimed Kate Winslet drama Mayor of Easttown. This year's BET Award nominations are all about Megan the Stallion and DaBaby. They timed for the most nods, seven. Megan, coming off three Grammy wins, is up for Album of the Year. DaBaby, also up for Album of the Year. The BET Awards will air live on June 27th. And promising young woman Oscar nominee Carrie Mulligan with a birthday today. She's 36. While the Empress of Soul, Gladys Knight, is 77. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. Right now it's 456, about 76 degrees. And coming up at 5, we're going to shine a spotlight on a college grade grad with her eyes set on Broadway. And Jopolis claims a pandemic era low. And coming up in the next hour, we'll give you those numbers. And ahead on GMSA at 6, experts say the food you eat could be the key to living longer. We're going to tell you which foods you should add to your diet. Live from Chase at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Jobless claims that a new pandemic low nationwide. What this means for our economic recovery. And more controversy with the Tokyo Olympics, how the heat this summer might hurt athletes. And outside with live cam, more of the same. We've seen the same picture before sunrise all week long. But it is Friday. It is May 
28th. That's right. And, I, and we love this shot because we sneak in a little bit closer. Oh, yeah. And a little bit closer. <laughs> things get back to normal. We're going to get there. We're going to yeah, get there. Yeah, we're, we're almost there. Happy mm -hmm. Friday, guys. Uh, a lot of you are going to have an extended weekend. So uh, luckily, the temperatures won't get too hot. We do want to keep an eye on the sky throughout the weekend. Here's Mike with more on our holiday weekend forecast. Good morning, everyone, especially later on tonight. More on that in just a second. Um, but we're starting off this morning just about like every other morning, except uh, that number is actually higher. We're at 76 right now. Uh, the normal low temperature is 70, so six above that and a lot of humidity with that dew point at 72, 87% humidity. And we've got a, a nice little breeze out of the southeast at 15 miles per hour. Going to make it up into the upper 80s today. I think we keep a few more clouds around and that's going to keep temperatures down a degree, but we're still up right around the normal reading. Normal high is uh, 90. And then notice that 40% uh, by uh, 7 o'clock tonight. We're going to start to see some showers and thunderstorms moving in here later on tonight. The aquifer yesterday went down 6 tenths of a foot and allergens, moderate mold, and grass is on the low side. Okay, as far as the, uh, the long holiday weekend is concerned, it's going to be, I think, overall very nice. We will have a slightly better chance for a couple of uh, showers, maybe a thunderstorm tomorrow. One or two isolated showers around Sunday, Monday. I don't think it's going to be a huge deal as far as any rain, just, you know, something popping up here and there. Now, this, though, nighttime, this is overnight tonight and into early tomorrow morning, and we've got a cluster of some thunderstorms moving down through here, and some of those are potentially going to be severe. Storm Prediction Center does have most all of our area under the marginal risk, and then that gets bumped up to a slight risk for severe storms. High winds and hail are going to be the biggest threats again. That's out in uh, western portions of the hill country. We'll take a closer look at uh, the next rain chance, which is coming in here next week, despite a couple of showers here and there this weekend, but better rain chances coming in here next week. That's in just a few moments. Traffic Authority and Stephen Cavazos. Good morning, sir. What's been going on? Hey, good morning, Mike. You know, and if people are going to be traveling for that holiday weekend, they're going to want to be a little extra cautious if we have some weather out on the roads. But let's take a look at what's happening here right now. We do have some construction and maintenance going on. Nothing too major right now, but this maintenance maintenance work that is here off Loop 410 northbound and southbound or Connolly Loop is really impacting traffic in those southbound lanes of 35. They're doing some work on the lights there, so that should be clearing up momentarily, but right now it does look like it's slowing down traffic to almost 14 miles per hour there. So if you're heading out of the downtown San Antonio area and into possibly Lytle, do expect that we're going to see some delays there at least for the next few minutes or maybe the next hour or so. We're keeping tabs on that, but inbound times right now, if you're coming into downtown San Antonio from Lytle, right now things are looking good on 35 at 18 minutes. We're looking at 19 minutes coming in from Highway 90 on Castorville, and if you're coming in from Bernie on I-10. Do expect about 25 minutes to downtown San Antonio. Things are looking good here on Transguide at I-10 at Woodstone. We're going to be keeping tabs on things and gas prices. We know Mark stuff people are going to be heading out here uh, in the coming weekend or the coming days for the Memorial Day weekend. We'll have more coming up. Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, San Antonio police left with a lot of questions after a man was shot in the arm overnight. That man was brought to an urgent care clinic at Nacogdoches and Judson just after midnight. So police say he didn't tell investigators much except for the fact that it happened on a trail from the clinic. We were told he was taken to Bamsey. In the morning headlines, weekly claims for unemployment benefits have dropped their lowest level so far in the pandemic. Labor Department says the weekly claims for jobless benefits fell last week to 406,000 on a seasonally adjusted basis, a new pandemic era low. Before the pandemic, weekly claims were roughly 200,000. New numbers come as some states get ready to slash enhanced unemployment benefits ahead of the program's official September end date. There are some climate concerns for this year's Tokyo Olympics if they happen. A new report says the average temperature in Tokyo has increased three times as fast as the world's average. That could be extremely dangerous for athletes competing at the summer games. Organizers have already moved some outdoor events away from Tokyo and into other much cooler Japanese cities. In your morning consumer headlines, the CEO of one of the largest U.S. airlines says he doesn't think the American air industry will mandate passengers be vaccinated to fly. Ed Bastian of Delta Airlines made his comments ahead of a much anticipated 2021 summer travel season since the COVID-19 pandemic. I don't see us ever mandating in the U.S. travel system vaccinations as a requirement, maybe internationally, though. 
Okay, moving on, Facebook changing its policy on COVID-19 posts. The company says it will no longer remove posts that say the coronavirus was man-made. Facebook says it's because of ongoing investigations. Wednesday, President Biden directed U.S. intelligence to increase efforts to discover how the virus began. This weekend, Boston is unveiling the newly renovated valor of the 54th Massachusetts Volunteer Infantry Regiment Memorial. The Bronze Monument honors Civil War Colonel Robert Gold Shaw leading the all-black military unit. Today marks the 158th anniversary of Colonel Shaw leading the soldiers into battle. And a footnote to that story, that entire regiment featured in the movie Glory with Denzel Washington and Matthew Broderick. Very good. Time now is 5.05 and about 76 degrees. After the break, we'll put a spotlight on a local college graduate with big, big dreams. And taking a look outside with live cam, today is like the start of many of the days this week, kind of humid, but we are expecting temperatures not to get over 90, so that's good news there. We're gonna check in with Mike later on. And welcome back, it's about 5.08. A nationally recognized college student here in San Antonio celebrating more than one major milestone this year. East East Romero shines a spotlight on Amira Johnson and her success both on and off stage. Singing, acting, and helping people in her community. That's what 21-year-old St. Phillips College graduate Amira Johnson says she has a passion for. Uh, I just really love the arts a lot. Her major is in theater production and performance, but she excelled more than just on stage. Amira was part of several organizations, including the Phi Theta Kappa Honor Society, and even claimed the title of St. Philip's College 2020 HBCU Competitiveness Scholar. She is definitely a role model for other students. Angela McPherson Williams, one of Amira's mentors, says she met Amira by accident, but after getting to know her, she knew she would go on to do bigger and better things. She did what she came here to do. She achieved her educational goals. She's transferring to Texas State, and she's going to take all of the spirit, the fun, and the knowledge with her when she goes. However, things were not always easy for Amira. Originally born and raised in Dallas, she was put up for adoption at the age of one with her four other siblings. Uh, I always wanted a family, so uh, to be together, to be been able to get adopted together, because not many uh, siblings do, but being able to do that was a true blessing. And years later, that wish came true. She and her siblings finding their forever home with the Johnsons, this year marking their 10th anniversary. And for anyone facing an uphill battle, Amira has some advice. I would say continue to dream. Don't ever give up on your dreams and um, keep moving forward. And when it gets tough, when your past reminds you of what you didn't do, just move past that and say that I am enough because that you are enough and you can do it and you will make it through. Amira plans to transfer to Texas State in the fall where she will continue majoring in performance and production. She says she hopes to be on Broadway one day and potentially start her own organization to help people in her community. Easy Throw Metal, KSAT 12 News. And time now is 5.11 and about 76 degrees right now. Have you ever wanted to combine all your favorite cereals after the break? We'll show you how you can do this on purpose in this morning's Tech Bites. No, thank you. Taking a look out with TransGuide, we're looking at I-35 at Alamo. Things are running smoothly, but it's early. We're going to check in with Stephen Cavazos later on. I've made progress with my mental health. So when I started having unintentional body movements called tardive dyskinesia, I ignored them. But when the movements in my hands and feet started throwing me off at work, I finally had to say, it's not okay. It was time to talk to my doctor about Austedo. She said that Austedo helps reduce TD movements in adults, while I continue with most of my mental health medications. Austedo can cause depression, suicidal thoughts, or actions in patients with Huntington's disease. Pay close attention to and call your doctor if you become depressed, have sudden changes in mood, behaviors, feelings, or have suicidal thoughts. Common side effects include inflammation of the nose and throat, insomnia, and sleepiness. Don't take Austedo if you have liver problems, are taking Respirin, Tetrabenazine, or Valbenazine. Austedo may cause a regular or fast heartbeat, restlessness, movements mimicking Parkinson's disease, fever, stiff muscles, problems thinking, and sweating. Talk to your doctor about Austedo. It's time to treat TD. 
TD is not okay. Visit AskForAllStedo.com. In today's Tech Bytes, Tesla's safety ratings take a hit. The company lost top endorsements from two key groups after shifting to a safety system that uses cameras instead of radar. The move by Consumer Reports and the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety affects Tesla's newly built models 3 and Y. Tesla has not commented. Instacart is launching a new feature called Priority Delivery so users can get their groceries faster. The company describes the service as similar to the in-store express lanes. Finally, Kellogg's new Bullbot. It just debuted on two college campuses. Students use it to order custom-made combinations of cereals. No word on when the Bullbot will debut for a wider audience. Those are your Tech bites. Have a great day. Paul, I'm starting to empathize with you at so many levels. I, uh, <laughs> I've only gotten 40 years in me. You have 47 plus, but I'm still getting the lines, hey, I grew up watching you. I've been watching you since I was in first grade. Um, hey, you went to school with my mom. <laughs> All those great things you get when you've been on the air as long as you've been on the air. And of course, your days stretch everything for what? 12 star finals, seven show, news watched, night beat, quite the tenure, quite the tenure, my friend. And I just want to say congratulations on your retirement. Um, you're well admired, and not just by those of us in our side of the business, but those of us on the legal side of the business. And you know Bert very well. He speaks very highly of you. All the judges do because they appreciate your experience and they appreciate your delivery, your talent to cover the courts, and you will always be dean of that particular uh, project. And for that, I congratulate you, and I will ask you one favor. Please enjoy your retirement because you have earned it. Amen. That was KSAT Sports Director Greg Simmons. All day we're celebrating Paul Venema's career right here on KSAT. That's right. We're going to miss him. We have a lot of stories for you coming up throughout the day and also at 9 a.m. later today. He's going to be here in the studio. Mm -hmm. We haven't mm -hmm. seen him in like uh, a year, 13, 14 months, maybe. <laughs> Since the beginning of the pandemic. So good to be bring him back in the studio. But also in the studio right now is our Stephen Cavazos, who's keeping a close eye on the traffic. Well, congratulations to Paul. Such a nice guy. Definitely deserves it. And yes, we are keeping a very close eye on the things. It looks like something's happening there off 90 at 410. We're going to have to get back to that here in the next few moments. That did just pop up, but things here on Transguide are looking pretty smooth right now at I-10 at Woodlawn. Pretty good as we head into the Memorial Day weekend, but we do want to be extra cautious as we head out the door this morning. We still have this delay here in those southbound lanes of 35 right at Connolly Loop. Uh, you can see that, as we mentioned, there's some maintenance work that's happening there as they're taking care of some lights in that area. So just be prepared to slow down if you're heading in that direction, leaving the downtown area here. But if you are going to be heading out of San Antonio over the holiday weekend, take a look at these gas prices here in Bear County, 261. The state average right now, 272. And here across the country, 304. So pretty good. You want to fuel up if you're going to be heading out. Uh, another look here at Transguide. We do also want to remind drivers that TxDOT has launched their Click It or Ticket campaign. Now, this is an initiative that's going to be uh, lasting through June 6, and it's all to get drivers to buckle up as we head into the Memorial Day weekend. Now, TxDOT did report that there was a 16% increase last year in the number of deaths of drivers who did not buckle up. So if you're heading out the road, be sure to buckle up, guys. Good advice. Thank you, Stephen. I want to add something to what Simmons was talking about yes. as far as the about, Paul? about Paul, about the judges mm -hmm. and everybody and everybody mm -hmm. down at the courthouse years and years ago when I was also doing some reporting and stuff like that. And I was down at the courthouse and ran into Paul. He's like, hey, come on. He started taking me around all over here. Walk right into judges <laughs> offices. Yes. And all the way. Hey, Paul, how you doing? He'd run over, help himself <laughs> to cook. Hey, come on, here, come on. Sit in the judges. Like, hey, Paul, yeah. what's what's up? Yeah, yeah, no, no. He he is a VIP. Like he a is. superstar. Yes. yes. Everybody. No, try on the there. robe. Try on the judge's robe. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I mean, everybody knows him. Yeah. And you know, he just did and and that's why he was always so great at covering the courts and everything. Oh, yeah. So no doubt about that. We were the beneficiaries of that. Yes, oh, we were. Yeah, and, and being a fellow Michigander, too, so that's right.
Anyway, well, beautiful picture from a couple of days ago, and I like how it says broken the uh, kind of the Seattle Washington way we had so much rain, but we may start looking a little more like Seattle coming in toward the middle of next week. Today it's just wow, humid and very warm. It's a lot warmer. We're actually a couple of degrees warmer than we were even yesterday or the day before that. Obviously, lots of clouds hanging around here, and there are a few, uh, as you can see, some uh, showers, thunderstorms over there in the mountains of Mexico, and there's going to be a lot of bits of energy coming in here and this is especially going to be the case later on this afternoon and going into this evening and then also up further up to the north heat index readings once again today are going to be about four or five degrees above the actual air temperature so most everybody it's going to be feeling like it's well up into the uh, 90s and heat indices once again are going to be up into the uh, low hundreds down there right to along the far southwestern portion of the uh, rio grande valley so here's what's going on today notice how and this is that one computer model it does tend to broad brush things, but we have a few showers starting to brew, especially up there to the north by about dinner time. And then going into this evening and the overnight hours, we will see this area of showers and thunderstorms developing. And this is going to be through the nighttime hours, and this is right around midnight, and then continuing on into the early morning hours of tomorrow. Now, by about sunrise tomorrow, it looks like most of that should be on out of here. Then we'll still have a few scattered showers around throughout the day tomorrow. And then, uh, kind of dying down a little bit. One or two of them on Sunday. And again, this is kind of broad brush. I don't think it's this does not mean we're going to be seeing rain everywhere on Sunday. Just the indication that yeah, a pop up shower here or there is going to be possible. Kind of downplaying rain chances really Sunday and Monday. Just don't be surprised if one or two of them do pop up. Then we go into next week and Tuesday and Wednesday, the middle part of next week. And this is going to be where we start to see better chances for some of those showers and thunderstorms, maybe a, a couple of heavier downpours around here. And again, there is the threat for severe weather tonight, and this is the marginal risk for most of the area, the green area, and then the slight risk out there to the west of us and high winds and hail are going to be the biggest threats later on tonight. So for the uh, western portion of the hill country today. We'll make it up into the about low, almost mid 80s by noon. Mostly cloudy skies. I think we keep a, more clouds around than even yesterday, which will knock temperatures down maybe a degree. Normal high 90 in the neighborhood there. And a couple of those showers going to start to develop late this afternoon, evening hours, dinner time, especially up to the north. And then that cluster of showers and thunderstorms is going to move through the area in the overnight hours. Could have a couple of heavy downpours associated with that tonight as well. Maybe a stronger storm and then a few leftover showers throughout the day tomorrow, Sunday, Monday, eh, one or two showers. Then rain chances pick up by the uh, middle of next week and temperatures only in the low 80s. That is very nice yes. for the beginning of June. Nice mm -hmm. <laughs> low 80s mm -hmm. first of June. Take that. Exactly. Thank you, Michael. 522 on your Friday morning. And there's a lot happening in Hollywood. We're going to tell you what you need to know coming up in the spotlight. Theater owners are hoping A Quiet Place Part 2 has a loud impact. Some 70% of U.S. theaters have reopened, according to the analytics firm Comscore, and this weekend's debuts of Quiet Place 2 and Disney's Cruella could fuel the biggest weekend box office total since March of 2020. Welcome to Minos Escape Rooms. No, no, no. What's happening again? You guys have played the game before? So what is this? Like a tournament of champions? Exactly. Here's your first look at Escape Room Tournament of Champions, the sequel to the 2019 psychological horror film. Once again, six people are locked in a series of escape rooms trying to survive by solving various puzzles. Escape Room Tournament of Champions arrives in theaters July 16th. If you're looking for a new Night Ranger album, you're in luck. The Hard Rockers are releasing their first studio album in four years. It's called ATBPO, which stands for And the Band Played On, a reference to making music during the COVID-19 era. It's available on CD and vinyl August 6th. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. And time now is 526 and about 76 degrees right now. A woman who made national headlines, uh, she's accused of killing her own children, will not, not stand trial anytime soon. We have details on a Lori Daybell coming up. 
And experts say kids spend an average of two hours and 19 minutes looking at a screen each day. Coming up, what you can do to minimize their screen time. And ahead on GMSA at 6, jury selection set to begin today with some COVID protocols in place. Well, we make national headlines. Uh, we have details. Lori Vallow accused of killing her own children. Why officials say she will not be able to stand trial right now. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, we have a humid start to your day, but we're looking forward to nice temperatures for this extended weekend. And a good morning to you. It is Friday, May 28th. I always look down because I want to make sure I get that part right. I do the same thing, even though, but we know, the thing we do know is that it's Friday. We, we won't get that wrong, right? <laughs> and it's a long Memorial Day weekend. Mike is here with more on a chance of storms. Yeah, uh, later on tonight to start off the weekend, there is a chance for some uh, pretty good showers and thunderstorms, maybe some hefty downpours, maybe some stronger storms. And then overall, I think the weekend's going to be pretty nice, you know, a shower here or there, but uh, temperatures are going to be very, very tolerable compared to, you know, some recent or past uh, Memorial Day weekends. 76 right now. It is very warm out there, even warmer than what it was uh, yesterday. Dew points at 72, which means there's a ton of humidity and we have a nice breeze out of the southeast, but that's just continuing to pump in all that humidity around here. The severe threat does exist later on tonight. Most of the area has the marginal risk, which is one on a scale of one to five high winds and hail are going to be the biggest threats and that gets bumped up a little bit out to the in western portions of the hill country out to a slight risk. Now later on this morning, Storm Prediction Center is going to be reassessing the situation and they may actually update this map and change these uh, colors around and add to uh, areas to the higher risk or make it a lower risk. So that's going to be uh, maybe about, uh, say, 6 7 o'clock. We'll have to watch out for that this morning. Mostly cloudy today and then those storms tonight. I think we keep more clouds around today than what we had the past couple of afternoons and high temperatures are going to be in the upper 80s at or just degree or two shy of the normal high temperature. Uh, a couple of uh, showers and thunderstorms are going to be possible tomorrow. Mm, you know, here and there, maybe a shower or two Sunday or Memorial Day. I really wouldn't count on it, but just to kind of keep that in mind, temperatures are going to be in the mid to lower 80s both of those days. So we're going to get a big break from the temperatures. And then next week, especially in the middle of the week, Tuesday, Wednesday, maybe lingering into Thursday, we will have some rain. And once again, temperatures are going to be staying in the low 80s. So nice way to start the month of June. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. And right now, Traffic Authority and Stephen Cavazos. What's going on, sir? Hey, thanks so much, Mike. Well, good morning. We are spotting some issues. This is here off Highway 90 right at 410. Looks like we have a driver that may have a stalled vehicle. Let's walk over and see what we're seeing this morning. This uh, is happening again here. The view from Transguide at Highway 90 at Loop 410. Well, we've spotted a driver getting in and out of their vehicle right now, and some of the vehicles that are passing by are moving over to give that person plenty of room so they can get their vehicle uh, situated there. But some drivers are actually just driving right up next to them, which is not what you're going to want to do. This is a pretty dark area there, so just be sure to be extra cautious if you're heading in that direction and give that person plenty of room so they can get out of the way and get to you where you need to be safely. Now this is happening in those eastbound lanes of uh, Highway 90 right at 410, not impacting traffic right now, so that's a good thing, a good time to get out on the roads and get to where you need to be so far. Things are looking good here off 281 at Bulverde coming into from Bulverde, that is to downtown San Antonio. About 26 minutes we're looking uh, from 35 coming in from New Braunfels about 26 minutes and if you're coming in from Seguin at I-10 about a 30 minute commute to downtown San Antonio. One last look here at Transguide where we do have that driver working to get their situation uh, fixed there. So just be sure to be extra cautious if you're heading in that direction. Thank you, Stephen. San Antonio police are looking for the man who attacked a woman on a west side street. They say he stabbed her after she refused his advances. Katrina Weber has a live report from downtown. Now, Katrina, we understand this woman suffered some serious stab wounds. Well, that is right. Police tell us she was in critical condition after being stabbed repeatedly. Now, based on what this woman told officers, it seems she did not know her attacker. A police found her around midnight in the 1200 block of Culebra Road near Sarsamora. Police say she had suffered a number of stab wounds in her upper body. Well, that woman who's in her 30s told officers she was walking along Culebra Road when the man tried to pick her up, asked her for sex. She says she started to run away, but he caught her and stabbed her. And again, police say she was in critical condition as she was rushed to a hospital. The attacker was gone by the time police arrived. 
The only description they were able to share with us is that he was a man in his 20s. Reporting live downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. New this morning, a man who showed up at an urgent care clinic with a gunshot wound, not saying a whole lot to investigators. Police say the man showed up at an urgent care clinic at Nacogdoches and Judson just after midnight. The man had been shot in the arm and he told police that it happened on a trail. He says the gun, which wasn't his, was dropped off and went off. From the clinic, the man was taken to Bamsey. There's grief and shock in San Jose, California, after that mass shooting at a rail yard left nine people and the gunman dead. Overnight, police released a new surveillance video of the gunman during the shooting as authorities continue to comb through the scene. ABC's Elizabeth Schulze has the latest. This morning, as the investigation continues into the San Jose mass shooting, a community is grieving the loss of nine innocent lives. We get up every morning safe in the belief that when we go to work, that we would come home to our family and our loved ones. That did not happen. Vicki Lane's husband, Lars, was among those killed. Holding him, just holding him. That's what I'm gonna miss. Overnight, the Santa Clara Sheriff's Department releasing new surveillance video of the gunman, 57-year-old Samuel Cassidy, walking across the rail yard moments after his first round of shooting on his way to another building to kill more victims. Officials say Cassidy fired 39 shots armed with three semi-automatic handguns and 32 magazines of ammunition. And now investigators are characterizing Cassidy as a highly disgruntled Transportation Authority employee who may have been targeting his victims. There was a person there that was a non-VTA employee and the gunman said, I'm not going to shoot you, and then began shooting other people. Sources also confirm U.S. Customs officers detained Cassidy in 2016 after a trip to the Philippines, saying he possessed books about terrorism, fear, and manifestos, as well as a black memo book filled with lots of notes about how he hates the VTA where he worked. Co-worker Jose Hernandez was an electrician at the VTA killed in the attack. He's a wonderful young man, really you know, willing to help everybody. Now here in Washington, the House has passed two gun control bills so far this year, but they remain stalled in the Senate. The White House says President Biden is looking into additional executive actions on guns and background checks. Elizabeth Schulze, ABC News, Washington. Court records say a woman indicted for the murders of her two children in Idaho is not competent to continue with court proceedings. The records released yesterday indicate Lori Vallow Daybell needs treatment before she can continue. The prosecution objects to that finding. It comes the same day police in Arizona announced they're submitting another charge, conspiracy to commit first degree murder. Vallow Daybell's children haven't been seen since September of 2019. Back here at home, our Paul Venema has spent 47 years here at KSAT 12. In those times, he spent a lot of time around courthouses of Bear County. Now to talk about how Paul impacted him and his courtroom, Judge Ron Ronhell of the 30, 379th District. One thing I can say about, about Paul, he's never had an agenda. He's told every story as accurately as I could ever imagine. I don't know how he does it. Um, it seems very hard sometimes for me to see how a good reporter can do the balance of covering the story the right way. He's never done anything in any way that anybody at the courthouse could ever say uh, compromise any type of a story. Um, when they call him a legend, um, it's, it's the truth because there can never be another Paul Venema. He's honest, he's real, uh, he's truthful, uh, he has a kindness about him. There's a humbleness about him that comes out every time I see him and speak to him. Um, we're definitely going to miss him here at the courthouse. All um, of that is true. <laughs> thank you, Judge, for yeah. your comments. And uh, we can't wait to see Paul later this morning. I know, it's exciting. And he's so humble, though. I mean, you, you would tell him all that, and he would be like, nah, nah, nah. forget nah. it. <laughs> uh, don't forget, we're going to sit down with Paul coming up on GMSA at 9 a couple of times uh, later this morning. Time now is 538 and about 76 degrees. Do you love taking pictures but hate the way they turn out? So ahead, we have some tips to make sure you always get that perfect picture.
And did you know that children eight and younger spend an average of two hours and 19 minutes a day looking at a screen? Experts say that may be because it's harder for parents to really monitor what their kids are doing. After the break, what you can do as a parent to keep your kids from staring at their phone all day. And outside with live cam, made it to Friday, everybody. Pat yourselves on the back. We made it to Memorial Day weekend, too. Some of you are off with a long holiday. Don't forget to think about our service members who gave their lives for our freedoms on Monday. And welcome back. It's about 542. The amount of time young children in the U.S. spend with mobile screens might raise some eyebrows as a new report found it has tripled in just four years. Yeah, the new report found children eight and younger spend an average of two hours, 19 minutes a day looking at a screen. Experts say the increased usage may be because it's harder for parents to really monitor what their kids are doing. Researchers also say parents may rely on a phone or tablet to keep their kid calm and quiet while out in public. But according to the survey, allowing babies to play on an iPad may lead to speech delays. A growing trend experts saw among parents is to give their young children hand-me-down smartphones or tablets. Experts recommend families not give their kids total control of these devices. Instead, they recommend keeping them high where the kids have to ask permission to use them and set rules about where and when they can be used. Experts say it's important to find a healthy balance of media use for children or do like many of us and just take them away take them away take well, them away i i have found myself we we used to to hide them just like we hide mm -hmm. chocolate right right <laughs> we hide well, the iPad. You're, you're hiding a device from mooney they're hiding the chocolate from you uh both both, both ways, ways. Okay. both ways gotcha fair <laughs> enough 543 76 degrees and summer is coming which means you'll want to have your camera in hand to capture all your favorite moments but after the break we're going to show you how to get that perfect picture and welcome back. It's about 546 now. Too much light, not enough, double chin, too many wrinkles. It shouldn't be that hard to take a good photo. We all know the feeling too well. You feel confident, snap a photo, eager to share it, and surprise, your camera refuses to capture the way you actually look. It's so true. So phone cameras have come a long way, but they are not perfect. David Sears has tips on how to take the best pictures of yourself with your phone. We've all taken photos that look like this, and this, and even this. Yeah, I'll take a bad one of her and she's like, no, don't do it like that. I guess I get so self-critical that I'm like, I don't even want to do it today. I'll just wait for another day until I look better, even though I'm going to look the same. Get the picture perfect photos. First, avoid bad lighting. Close your curtains and leave a thin gap in one. Dial down the exposure on your phone for a more natural photo. Next, never fill the full frame. Rather place one foot in front of the other and use the camera grid feature to leave one blank box above your head. Social media influencers are experts at making the camera work for them. Hold your camera up, tilt it down, and you'll have a more slimmer and more flattering selfie. Don't shoot down. Move back and flip your phone upside down. Leave one third blank space above the head. Another tip, shoot in black and white if you have bright lights and dark shadows in your picture, but not a lot of vibrant colors. Shooting in black and white can make the image look clearer and more professional. David Sears, KZ12 News. Paul, I just want to thank you. Uh, I still remember 20 some years ago when I was a kid walking into the KSAT newsroom and you were so friendly and professional and even when we worked side by side, whether it was at the Gerald Tornadoes or even going to lunch, you know, when I was doing something at the courthouse, I've always appreciated uh, who you are and what you stand for. And I think a lot of people don't know how funny you are. The fact that you always have a joke, that you always have something in the back, in your back pocket that you can pull out just to uh, break the tension or break the ice. So I wish you nothing but the best, but I hope you know just how much you'll be missed. That was our Steve Spreester talking about Paul Venema's impending retirement. Yeah, he's a very funny guy. Yes. I had new frames several years ago and they were, they were way thicker uh -huh. and darker than these. And Paul walked in and he goes, I went, good morning. And he goes, <laughs> Governor Rick Perry called. He wants his glasses. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> and he was probably totally serious while he said it. Yeah, and then I laughed, and he laughed. He's like, yeah. yeah. And, and I haven't oh, worn them wow. since, so. Uh, <laughs> you haven't worn them since. So there's that. <laughs> yes. Well, that is true. What, strong words from Paul. If he says something, we all listen. I, lo I love the guy to yeah. this day. I, I will never turn my back on Paul, even yeah. if he makes fun of me. <laughs> We're more with Paul yes. coming up, and we're going to see him live right here in the studio on GMSA at 9. I think it's time for a group hug. Yeah, I think so. Uh, we haven't seen him in over a year. Um, so, Paul, for me, he sat like a, just a few seats down. Right. So this will be nice to have him back in the studio. So, again, watch us at 9. Still to come, let's check traffic right now, 549. Here is Mr. Stephen Cavazos. Hey, good morning, everyone. Well, we do have uh, a little bit of a progress here at Highway 90 at 410, where we do have that stalled vehicle. Take a look over here. This is actually the eastbound lanes of Highway 90. We now have first responders that are out there on the scene, hoping to get that person out of the way so that way they can get to where they need to be safely. Uh, but this looks like it may be resolving when we uh, see you here coming up in the next few minutes. But uh, let's take a look at exactly where that is again, right at the eastbound lanes of Highway 90 at Loop 410, not impacting traffic right now, but something to to be very careful of if you're heading out in that direction. Uh, we have spotted another stall that's actually here in the westbound lanes of I-10 right at Medical Drive. This looks to be the issue this morning. People are facing stalls as they head out of the door, head out the door, which they want to be very cautious of, of course, as we head into this Memorial Day weekend. Again, another look here at Transguide where we do have that scene that looks like it may be resolving pretty soon here, Mike. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Ed, amen to Venema's humor. He would say some of the funniest things at, you know, just to lighten the tension sometimes. And we just getting ready to tell you a joke. He's kind of kind of laughs, you know, leading yeah. into it. And you know, he's like, OK, something's coming. Yeah, so. it is. All right. Uh, beautiful picture, beautiful sunsets. And on the evening drive, do not uh, take pictures while you're driving, of course. But thank you very much for that. All right. Um, probably not going to have the greatest sunrise again this morning. There may be a couple of holes in the clouds here and there. But uh, obviously, we got a lot of clouds hanging around. Did make it up to 89 again yesterday. Upper 90s down to the southwest and off to the west 99 at Eagle Pass as well as Del Rio and later on today about the same situation. I think we have a few more clouds maybe down a degree or two uh, out there at the airport, um, but still very humid. Yeah, you're outside doing any yard work, anything like that. It is really, really humid out there, so make sure you drink plenty of water, obviously. All right, throughout the rest of today, we will have, again, I think a few more uh, clouds hanging around here. Now, this evening, we're going to start to see some of these showers developing out to the west and up to the north. This is the uh, rapid update computer model, which is doing a pretty good job as far as depicting what it's going to be going on going into the mid evening hours. Some of the thunderstorms are going to be developing out there to the west. There is the chance some of those may become strong to potentially severe. So it's almost like we'll have two areas, one coming in from the west and then also dropping down here from the north. And this is going to be in the wee hours tomorrow morning. Again, more of these showers and thunderstorms developing around here could have some pretty hefty downpours with some of these as well on top of the risk of the severe weather with high winds and hail. And that'll go through the early morning hours tomorrow. Maybe a little bit of a break in the, say, mid morning and then throughout the afternoon we will start to see more of those a uh, couple of showers and thunderstorms developing here and there. Um, not a great chance 30 40%. So one or two of them here and there tomorrow. And like I said, there's also the severe threat and this is going to be tonight marginal risk for most of the area slight risk out there to the west and the storm prediction center is going to be updating this later on this morning. So we'll see if they Decide to maybe up the risk at all for any of the areas. And then as we go into the rest of the Memorial Day weekend, just a stray shower here or there on Sunday, maybe on Monday. 83 degrees today at noon, most of the cloudy skies. And later on, 88, high temperature. The rain's going to start to develop late this afternoon, out to the west, up to the north, and then especially this evening. And that's when we have some of those thunderstorms, potentially strong or severe. A couple of hefty downpours can't be ruled out. Um, just a few showers here and there. Then tomorrow throughout the rest of the day, one or two showers Monday, or excuse me, Sunday, Monday. Better rain chances Tuesday and Wednesday. And highs only in the uh, low 80s. That's okay if we don't have a break from the rain. I'm, I'm okay with it coming back next week. Yeah, and it'll be midweek, so to start <laughs> off the month. But again, Sunday and Monday, I think are going to be nice days, you know, for uh, picnics or yeah. parades, just hanging out, honoring, of course. Yes. All in soldiers. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mike. 553 on your Friday morning. And for many districts here locally, school is out for the summer. After the break, we're going to show you how students and teachers at one school celebrated the end of the academic year. 
Summer just started for everyone at Pre-K for SA. They celebrate the end of the school year with a drive through parade. The parade happened on Eisenhower Road yesterday. With help from HEB and the San Antonio Food Bank, students were given bags of fruit and veggies to encourage a healthy start to summer break. Kids should be focused on fun in the sun, outdoor play. Kids shouldn't be worried about where their next meal is coming from. We get to partner with our food bank and come out here. We're just excited when we get to come along and enjoy the celebrations like we have here today. There were also some other fun items for the kiddos, including bubbles, sunglasses, and a book for summer reading. Glad you're with us on GMSA. Still to come in our next hour, Crime Stoppers need help solving a murder case from a few years ago. What police know and how you can help. The Memorial Day travel surge is already underway, but is it too early to look past the coronavirus? And we've got the latest on an overnight stabbing case. That suspect still on the loose as of this hour. And trans guy Stephen Cavazos is here with more. We'll check on those flashing lights at 90 near Loop 410. And Mike has your Memorial Day weekend forecast still to come here on GMSA. As I look over at radar, if you're traveling up towards, say, Shreveport or parts of Arkansas, big storms this morning. His full forecast coming up, including a chance of rain for right here in the Alamo City area. And much more on our farewell to Paul Venema, who retires from KSAT 12 today after 47 years in broadcasting. Now at 6, a woman walking down a San Antonio highway is stabbed several times in the stomach. We'll have details. And there's a pretty good chance you bought some things you might not have needed during the pandemic. So we asked, what did you buy? We're going to share some of your responses. And you'll want to hear this as you're making breakfast this morning. A new robot that lets you mix and match your favorite cereal. And a humid start to your Friday. But hey, you know what? You're going to have an extended weekend, or a lot of people will, and it will not be that hot. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning and happy Friday. Today is May 28th. Yay, we made it to we Friday. We did. <laughs> and a lot, you know, it's kind of a, a, a extended weekend, but also a lot of people are ending school this mm -hmm. week. So yep. a lot of people will be spending time outdoors this weekend. Or hitting the road for the first That's time true. in mm -hmm. a year. A lot mm -hmm. of people now starting to hit restaurants and maybe even the movie theater. But Mike has more what's going to happen outside this weekend. Yeah, most of, of the weekend is going to be nice. Uh, we got, you know, there's a couple of rain chances here and there. What we're really going to have to watch out for, though, is going to be uh, tonight. First First of all, as far as the uh, the weekend is concerned, we do have a chance for some uh, showers and a couple of thunderstorms in the overnight or excuse me throughout the day tomorrow. I'm going to get to tonight in a second and then just an isolated shower to Sunday and Monday. Notice these temperatures, though. We're still going to have plenty of humidity around here, but we're going to have highs in the low, maybe leaning toward the mid 80s, which is nice. Now back to nighttime storms around here. There is the chance this is going to be starting really about dinner time tonight and out to the west and then also up to the north, there is the chance for some of those storms to be strong to potentially severe, especially out in western portions of the hill country where there's that slight risk for a severe storm. High winds, hail are going to be the biggest threats and then the marginal risk elsewhere. And again, that will start later on this evening and then up through the wee hours of tomorrow morning and things will start to taper off a little bit then. Then a few of those uh, showers in the afternoon. This morning, uh, temperatures are going to stay basically steady, maybe fluctuate a degree or two when it's all said and done. We'll be in the low to mid 70s. And I think we keep a lot of clouds around today. Some sunshine thrown in, of course, but a few more than the past couple of days. 84 at noon. Again, very humid and we'll make it into the upper 80s, just about up to normal. Normal high temperature average is 90. And again, a lot of clouds out there. Then that chance of rain later on tonight. Another chance of rain down the road. We'll talk about that and uh, see if there's any 90s in the we're, we're at looking for 90s, believe it or not, in this forecast. Uh, that's hard to believe. But anyway, details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority and Stephen Cavazos. What's going on, sir? Hey, good morning, Mike. Uh, well, we still have this situation here at Highway 90 at 410. A little bit of progress right now. It's still out there. Take a look over here at TransGuy. We still uh, actually have uh, now a person out there, first responder that is that's helping that person that have placed cones in that lane so they can get that vehicle out of the way. Taking a closer look here on the map, that's right here in those 
eastbound, or actually that's, we jumped over to another stall that's actually happening here. Those happen in the eastbound lanes of Highway 90, so just be a little cautious if you're heading out that way near 410. Another stall is actually happening here in those westbound lanes of I-10 right at Medical Drive. That looks like it's not impacting traffic, and it may have, in fact, also resolved. But taking a look at these inbound times right now, if you are coming in to the downtown San Antonio area, do expect about a 27-minute commute if you're coming in from 281 from Bulverde at 24 minutes from I-10 if you're coming in from Bernie and if you're coming in from Castroville on Highway 90, we're looking at a 19 minute commute time. Another look here at Transguide at 90 at 410 where we're working to get this vehicle out of the way. Uh, but for those of you that are going to be traveling for this Memorial Day weekend, we have some tips and a friendly reminder from TxDOT and gas prices coming up in the next few minutes. Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, police searching for a man they say stabbed a woman multiple times last night. Happened just after midnight, the 1200 block of Culebra. That's on the west side of town over by Woodlawn Lake. I told a woman was walking when she was approached by a man in his 20s who police say solicited her for sex. Police say she tried to run from him, but he caught up to her and then stabbed her. He then ran off. The woman was taken to a hospital in critical condition. We have an update on the case of a missing local woman. The head of a woman which was found in Louisiana has been identified as belonging to Sally Hines of San Antonio. Hines vanished more than three years ago. Investigators say the identification would not have happened without the help of sketch artists and a private citizen's detective work. This is a photo that police released in their search for the 58 year old woman back in December of 2017. Hines was last seen at her northwest side home. At the time, her family said she had dementia. Then in March of 2018, a human skull was found in Louisiana. The following year, a computer generated facial reconstruction was released. Here it is that image done by LSU Faces Lab and investigators confirm a private citizen went through pictures to try to see if they matched the sketch. Sheriff Ron Johnson of Cameron Parish of Louisiana says he received a tip last Thursday of a person who looked like the rendering just yesterday. Dental records confirmed the remains belong to Hines. Well, now we have new details on a shooting that happened on the east side earlier this week. San Antonio police say the man killed in the 1500 block of Upland Road on Monday was dragged and then shot in the head. The affidavit says 24 year old Delon Weaver was living with the suspect, 26 year old Keith Corley's ex girlfriend. When Corley found out Weaver was at the woman's apartment, police say he showed up, went inside, and talked to them. After a few minutes, the two men went outside and started arguing. And that's when officers say Corley dragged Weaver down the stairs and shot him. Corley then ran to his vehicle and took off. He was later arrested and is now in the Bear County Jail on a murder charge. In your national headlines, Republican senators have delayed passage of a massive bill designed to increase American competitiveness, competitiveness with China. And that means a key procedural vote on a bill to form a commission to investigate the January 6th Capitol breach has been delayed until later today. The timing of the vote to create the independent panel is still unknown. That's because it's unclear how long Republicans will drag out the fight over the previous bill. Once the U.S. Innovation and Competition Act has been voted on, the Senate would then move on to the January 6th commission bill. For that bill to move forward, at least 60 senators will have to vote yet yes, which is not yet expected. The bill has already cleared the House. Turning now to the coronavirus here at home, a little over 62% of those eligible in Bear County have received one dose of the COVID-19 vaccine. 48% of us are fully vaccinated. A reminder, Six Flags Fiesta Texas partnering with the city to give free tickets for vaccinations. We have details on that on KSAT.com. When it comes to cases, here's the latest numbers, or here are the latest numbers. 135 COVID patients remain hospitalized. Our seven day average has dropped to 126 cases per day. Three new deaths are now being reported. During lockdown, many people admitted to splurging on items they may not have really needed. So on our social media pages, we asked you, our viewers, what have you splurged on during, on the, uh, during the pandemic. And a lot of you responded. So here's a look at some of what some of you had to say. So from Twitter, someone said groceries, eating out is our bad habit. And the pandemic made us eat at home more, even though we ate out a lot. I do love to cook and fell in love with it again. That's sweet. From Facebook, someone wrote an above ground pool during the winter month when they were all on sale and back in stock. The kids have played in it every day that it's been warm and weather permitting a great investment. And one of our GMSA photographers, Tim Stewart, posted on Instagram that he said, we now have a puzzle obsession in the last year. We've gotten at least two 1,000 piece puzzles a month. 
Even though we're not actually in a lockdown anymore, we keep buying the puzzles. It's rewarding to finish each one and cheaper than therapy. Oh, that's so dumb. <laughs> cheaper than therapy. <laughs> you can join the conversation and check out what other people had to say on our social media pages uh, about what they splurged on during the pandemic. Look for more on KSAT.com and, of course, KSAT on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We also bought an above-ground pool, and I think we, we just missed it where everybody was buying those. Right. And so it actually came in, but we heard a lot of people were having to wait for theirs. And, sure. But, yes, it got a lot of use. Uh, the strange thing for me, Steph, is more fishing stuff kept showing up in boxes. <laughs> I don't know who's... More, yeah. Yeah, it's, I mean, I keep opening it. It's stuff I want, people, so... People keep sending Worked out them. well. <laughs> 608, about 76 degrees. And ahead on GMSA, we've got some high school baseball highlights for you. Our college great grad series continues. We'll meet a bright young woman who has some big aspirations. She's got a great story. San Antonio Missions back in action tonight after their game was postponed yesterday. We're going to have a preview. But not postponing you and our look outside with live cam on your Friday waiting for the sun to come up. Wow, it is dark out there by the airports. He's been real helpful uh, in the sense that, you know, he asks you questions, uh, you know, and you have to think about them sometimes. And you think, gosh, maybe we should, you know, tweak this or tweak that based on some of the questions he's given us here and there. And, and, but he's just a great guy. Talk minor league baseball. San Antonio Missions road game against Northwest Arkansas was postponed last night due to heavy rainfall, but they're back in action tonight with a doubleheader. They'll play two seven inning games beginning at five this evening with a 30 minute intermission between the end of game one and the start of game two. Game one of the Class 6A Region 4 final between Austin Bowie and the Judson Rockets. The game had to be moved to Braunfels after all the rain this week flooded the softball field up in Buda. Judson in a deep hole in the fourth, down 7 nothing before they started to launch. Lauren Ramos smashes the pitch over center field fence, and the rally is on. Very next batter, very next pitch. Emily Ayala goes deep over the center field, and the lead is down to five later in the inning with two runners on base. Keely Williams sends this one out of the park. This three-run blast brings home Samara Sanchez and Alia Pacheco to make it a two-run game. Rockets rally to win it 14-10. to Unbelievable. Game one of the 6A regionals, uh, baseball north side field between Eagle Pass and Smithson Valley. Top of the second, Rangers down one nothing. Cameron Hodges with the at the plate with Christian Keller on third. Hodges puts the pitch deep to right, but it would be deep enough to bring home Keller. There'd be a play at the plate, and he is safe. Game tied at one. Top of the six, Rangers down one again. Bases loaded for Tim Arguello. He comes through with a base hit to center field, and Keller scores easily. But will Hodges make before the throw? He slides for the go-ahead run. Rangers take game one, four to two. Congratulations to both teams. A nationally recognized college student here in San Antonio celebrating more than one major milestone this year. In today's college great grad series, E.C.'s Romero is shining a spotlight on Amira Johnson and her success story. Singing, acting, and helping people in her community. That's what 21-year-old St. Phillips College graduate Amira Johnson says she has a passion for. Uh, I just really love the arts a lot. Her major is in theater production and performance, but she excelled more than just on stage. Amira was part of several organizations, including the Phi Theta Kappa Honor Society, and even claimed the title of St. Philip's College 2020 HBCU Competitiveness Scholar. Angela McPherson Williams, one of Amira's mentors, says she met Amira by accident, but after getting to know her, she knew she would go on to do bigger and better things. She did what she came here to do. She achieved her educational goals. She's transferring to Texas State and she's going to take all of the spirit, the fun and the knowledge with her when she goes. However, things were not always easy for Amira. Originally born and raised in Dallas, she was put up for adoption at the age of one with her four other siblings. Uh, I always wanted a family, so 
uh, to be together, to be been able to get adopted together, because not many uh, siblings do. But being able to do that was a true blessing. And years later, that wish came true. She and her siblings finding their forever home with the Johnsons, this year marking their 10th anniversary. Amira plans to transfer to Texas State in the fall, where she will continue majoring in performance and production. She says she hopes to be on Broadway one day and potentially start her own organization to help people in her community. Easy Throw Metal, KSAT 12 News. Good morning, everyone. We have a look at your roads this morning. So far, things are looking pretty good. We have spotted a few stalls, but looks like they're resolving. But that seems to be the main issue right now here for this Friday morning. Now, this stall is actually happening here off of southbound lanes of 35 at Randolph Road, just a little past Live Oak, not impacting traffic right now. But we do want to remind folks that if you're going to be heading out this Memorial Day weekend, get that maintenance work done in your cars before you hit the road. We don't want to see any anyone stalled out in any area of our roadways. We want to get to your destination safely. You, something you're also going to want to do is keep a lookout for these gas prices. This is here. The average gas price in Bear County 261 right now. The state average at 272 and around the country. We're looking at 304. Now a look here at Transguide does show that things are moving smoothly, but we do want to remind people text dot. It has launched their campaign. Click it or ticket. It's going to run through June 6. So for if you're heading out the doorway, if you're going to be heading out to any location for this Memorial Day weekend, be sure to buckle up and be extra safe on your roadway. Thank you, Stephen. Yeah, good reminder. And for many students, today may be the last day of school. Right. Yeah, and because a lot have graduated already. We've mm -hmm. seen so many pictures of graduates and advancing maybe from, you know, elementary school to middle school or something. And the little tiny cap and gowns on those like pre-K pre graduates. graduates. Those are so cute. And congratulations to everybody yeah. for making it through another uh, school year. So now we get summer and summer, the unofficial start of it. Um, we're going to kind of get a little bit of a break this weekend because a lot of times, you know, we've had just scorching hot temperatures in the past as we go into Memorial Day weekend. But um, um, this is not going to be bad at all. 73 right now. Pretty darn humid though, and we'll make it up into the upper 80s later on today. Still plenty of humidity, mostly cloudy skies. A uh, couple of showers are going to start to pop up late this afternoon, more likely in toward dinner time and this evening, especially uh, first of all up to the north and to the uh, west. And look at the uh, blue skies out there with a couple of clouds mixed in. And yeah, uh, it was probably great flying weather, but this one was sitting. Oh yeah, there's a, a C5 in the foreground there. I almost missed that. So thank you, Yvonne. Yvonne's like my my alter ego over there as far as uh, and you too, Mark, with the loving airplane. There's so. not a plane picture you won't post. You know that, right? I know. Yeah. OK. I know. Very nice. They still haven't contacted me yet, right? But uh, yeah, if you got an empty jump seat, so. Address. Tell them. <laughs> no, I, anyway, um, I don't want to be that forward with it. I'll, I'll do it for you later. Thank you. Uh, that's what I was hoping for. Anyway, we've got lots of clouds out there this morning. It's very warm, very humid, and uh, this humidity, we may actually get a little bit of a break later on tonight. You can see the airflow is coming in here out of the uh, southeast off the Gulf of Mexico, but as this system moves through, then Later on this evening, we will get a slight bit of a wind shift, and so we may see a, a bit of a drop in the dew point temperatures by early tomorrow morning, but that's not going to be very long lived because we'll just maintain this basically east to southeast of the airflow over the next couple of days. That will, of course, keep the humidity around here. So a couple of showers are going to be possible today. Not a great chance, but we get into tonight and that's when we'll start to see more of these showers and thunderstorms popping up and a couple of these uh, clusters of big storms are going to be developing then, especially in the evening hours and late tonight. High winds and hail, some hefty downpours can be expected with some of these and these will continue to move through the area in the overnight hours and by tomorrow morning, most of that is going to be out of the picture. Then we'll have a few more showers after that throughout the day and maybe one or two Sunday, Monday. There is the chance for some of those to become severe with high winds and hail again. The marginal risk around most of the area and the slight risk then out in western portions of the hill country. Today we are going to make it up to 83 degrees at noon. Mostly cloudy skies, some sunshine of course mixed in, but I think we keep a few more clouds hanging around here and then a high temperature up to 88 normal high 90. So in the ballpark, but just shy of that and temperatures are definitely going to be held in check. As a matter of fact, dropping down a little bit going in toward Sunday, Monday, especially 85 tomorrow, uh, maybe a few afternoon showers or a thunderstorm, a shower or two can't be ruled out. I'll put it that way. Sunday, Monday, I, I, 
Don't want to see a big chance for rain, maybe a shower popping up here and there, but a better chance of rain than Tuesday, Wednesday, and even lingering into Thursday. And highs only in the low 80s to start off the month of June. We can handle that. We can. Mm -hmm. uh, the C5 Squadron out at uh, Lackland, it's M. Osterhage. <laughs> ASAT.com. <laughs> 620 right now on your Friday morning. Not that I'm begging. Yeah, we, we'll, it's we'll, okay. Uh, it's not begging when it's, we do it's it. It's a slight, you know, it's like a little favor. <laughs> Still ahead on GMSA, a new gadget from Kellogg's that allows you to make the perfect bowl of cereal. We're going to take a look after the break. Hey Paul, I grew up in the San Antonio area and I know you hate to hear this, but I grew up watching you and it was such an honor that later in my career I got to work alongside you. I know you're leaving and it's your retirement, but we're going to miss you, your smile and of course your friendship and your presence in the newsroom. I wish you all the best. At Stanley Steamer, we love homes. It's why we started cleaning them over 70 years ago and why we still continue today. Whatever home means to you, we're ready when you are to make sure your space is clean and that you and the ones you care about most are safe. To run a growing business is to be on a journey. And along the ride, you'll find many challenges. Your Dell Technologies advisor is here to help so you can stop at nothing for your customers. During photosynthesis, plants convert solar energy into chemical energy, cleaning the oxygen we breathe. Plants clean the air. When applied to stained textiles, plant-based surfactants like the ones in seventh generation detergent trap stains at the molecular level and flush them away. Plant-based detergents clean your clothes. It's just it's science. Just science. Just science. Seventh generation, powered by plants, tackles stains. In this morning's GMA First Look, bracing for summer shortages. When temperatures go up, so do sales of air conditioning units. But this increase in demand goes way beyond seasonal spikes. There's the fear that this could be like toilet paper and, and paper towels last, last spring. Many air conditioning manufacturers point to COVID-related production slowdowns, a worldwide shortage of semiconductors, and even the Texas freeze that has copper and plastic piping supplies facing unprecedented demand. Keep your fingers crossed the AC you have will keep working. It may be a long time before you can get a replacement unit or perhaps even the parts for the ones that you have. So how can you get around the supply chain crunch? We'll have the expert advice you need, even if you already own an AC. It's all coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Becky Worley, ABC News, Oakland, California. Finally, check out Kellogg's new Bowl Bot. It just debuted on two college campuses. Students use it to order custom-made combinations of cereal. No word on when Bowl Bot will debut for a wider audience, but I think many would agree we need this. Yeah, it looks right kind of cool. Mm -hmm. What would be like your dream mix? Or you're not much of a mixer? Uh, uh, well, not much, not too much, but you know, something probably not right. healthy. Think on it. Cookies. Captain Crunch and <laughs> cookies, something else. Yeah, something, something cookie crisp or something like that. Sounds good. 626, about 76 degrees. And still ahead, do you want to live a longer life? We're going to tell you which foods can help you do that. And we're staying on top of an overnight stabbing that sent one woman to the hospital. Let's take a look outside at Transguy with the roadways. It's 281 at Grayson. Things are moving smoothly right now. We're going to check in with Stephen Cavazos after the break. San Antonio police are looking for a man who it seems does not like rejection. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. They say he stabbed a woman after she turned him down. I'll tell you more about it. Holiday travel picking up ahead of Memorial Day weekend, but is it too early to overlook the coronavirus? And taking a look outside with live cam, we're a little humid this morning, but Mike says that it's going to be a little cooler today than it was yesterday. So that's great news for Friday. Hello and happy Friday. Today is May 28th. Thanks for joining us this morning. And Mike was telling us probably like the best day for a picnic might be Sunday or Monday. I think so. Um, temperatures are going to be down in the, the mid and lower 80s once we get into the latter part of the weekend. Uh, today it's still going to be warm and humid, you know, maybe a degree or so difference. And then we do have a chance for uh, some rain. And the best chance is going to be in the short term is going to be tonight. And then long term is going to be the middle part of next week. So looks like about the same as we've had the past couple of uh, couple of days around here.
85 tomorrow and then like we we're talking about low 80s going to the rest of the weekend. There is a better chance for a couple of showers and thunderstorms tomorrow, maybe in the afternoon, about a 40% chance. One or two scattered showers Sunday and Monday. I really wouldn't worry about it all that much. Now tonight there is the uh, chance for some uh, showers and thunderstorms. Some of those could be on the strong to potentially severe side. High winds, hail are going to be the biggest threats and the highest threat right now is that slight risk. That's a two on a scale of about one to five out in western parts of the hill country and then the marginal risk elsewhere. And again, this will begin dinner time and then going into the evening and the wee hours of tomorrow morning. And then we go into, uh, like I said, the rest of the weekend and temperatures will continue to go down. And there's that next chance of rain going into next week. We'll have more details on that in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority and Stephen Cavazos. It's been overall pretty quiet this morning. Pretty quiet, Mike. That's a good word, a uh, good way to phrase it. But they're definitely going to want to be careful if they're going to be heading out on the road for any possible trips for this Memorial Day weekend. Uh, let's Let's go ahead and take a look here at trans guide. Things are moving nice and smoothly here. Nothing too major to report, although we have spotted a crash that just occurred here in the southbound lanes of 35 right at Ritterman. You can see traffic is starting to slow down a little bit back in those southbound lanes of 35 to about 34 miles per hour, now actually 25 miles per hour. So things are slowing down there on 35 because of this crash. So something we'll be keeping tabs with throughout the morning. Uh, but taking a look around the city, it's pretty quiet, which is what we like to see as we're heading into a very possible busy weekend for the roadways as people are going to be making some trips to enjoy this Memorial Day weekend. Uh, but taking a look at these inbound times, if you're coming into San Antonio from any of these locations, take a look here. 27 minutes coming in from 37 on Pleasanton, 16 minutes on 30 coming in from Lytle and if you're coming in on Highway 90 expect about a 19 minute commute time to downtown San Antonio. Another look here at Transguide as we buckle up and get ready for this Memorial Day weekend. We'll have more of what you can expect coming up. Thank you, Stephen. It appears rejection may have led to retaliation on the west side overnight. San Antonio Place, a man attacked a woman who turned him down. It happened on Culebra Road near Zarzamora. Katrina Weber has a live report from downtown. Now, Katrina, have police found that man yet? Not as far as we know, and based on what they told us, it sounds like they have a pretty vague description, a man in his 20s. But while they're still looking for that man, they did find the woman around midnight. She's in her 30s. They found her in the 1200 block of Culebra near Sarzamora. Police say that woman had been stabbed repeatedly in her upper body. She told officers that she was walking along Culebra when the man asked her to have sex. The woman says she tried to run from him, but he caught her and stabbed her. She was rushed to a hospital by ambulance, and the last word we had from police is that she was in critical condition. Reporting live downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Also new this morning, San Antonio police left with more questions after a man was shot overnight. A little before 1230 this morning, the victim was brought to an urgent care clinic at Nacogdoches and Judson Road on the northeast side. The man had been shot in the arm. He did not tell investigators much except for the fact that it happened on a trail. From that urgent care clinic, he was then taken to Brook Army Medical Center. San Antonio police and Crime Stoppers are asking for your help in a pair of cases. The first is a murder case. Investigators are still looking for the person who killed 24-year-old Brian Walker. It happened back in June of 2018 at the Valentino Food Mart. That's on the city's west side in the 2400 block of Chihuahua Street. Police say they found Walker dead in the parking lot with a gunshot wound. Police are also looking for the people who robbed a storage unit at the extra space storage located on 281 South of Loop 410. Happened back on March 12th. Investigators say there are five suspects, three men and two women. They got away with two large safes containing 15 weapons, jewelry and other items valued around $300,000. If you have any information about either of these cases we just told you about, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers at the number on your screen, 210-224-STOP. Jury selection set to begin today in preparation for the in-person trial scheduled for next week. COVID-19 safety protocols will continue during the selection process. We're going to qualify up to 500 people through virtual means. So they're all going to appear on computer screens. I'm going to be talking to them through a computer screen. People will be questioned, and if there are any exemptions, if they arise, they will be discussed. Judge Ron Hell says safety protocols will still be followed within the courtroom. 
Well, it's Memorial Day weekend and the holiday travel surge is happening right now. Americans heading to airports and hitting the highways. People are more confident than ever that the worst of the pandemic is behind us and restrictions are easing up, setting the stage for a normal holiday weekend. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has more. This morning, Americans gearing up for the unofficial start to summer, hitting the beach, the roads and the skies. This is our first time traveling since last year, February. We're going to New York for a wedding and we're really excited about it. In fact, at least 37 million people are expected to travel this weekend, the largest number in more than a year. It seems like it's back to normal. Officials across the country are working tirelessly to make sure the pandemic can't stop the party. Go, get vaccinated, hit the beach. Mobile vaccine sites are setting up camp at some of the country's most popular beaches. We had an opportunity, we got vaccinated and we came down. While travelers passing through airports are being offered the single dose Johnson & Johnson vaccine before they fly. Super easy, super fast, super convenient. This year, strikingly different than what Memorial Day brought in 2020. With more than half of all adults in the U.S. now vaccinated, there's little fear of a repeat surge. If you've been fully vaccinated, then you can and should feel a lot safer about gathering this holiday weekend. And for those who haven't had their shot, states are starting to roll out increasingly extravagant incentives. California announced $116 million in rewards, the biggest program in the country, including $15 million to be split amongst 10 vaccinated residents. Meanwhile, CVS launched its own sweepstakes. The newly vaccinated could win a trip to the Super Bowl or a week-long cruise. I would encourage anyone to get the vaccine. If winning a million dollars isn't incentive enough, I don't really know what would be. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. Friday morning time check, 637. And still ahead on GMSA, we're going to tell you one of the secrets to living a longer life. Here's a hint. It's in your lunch bag. Paul Venema, the godfather, certainly an icon in San Antonio broadcasting. You're going to be missed, and we wish you well on your retirement. And welcome back. It's about 641. New research from Harvard University has found the key to a longer life is five servings of fruits and vegetables per day. Are you getting that amount or do you avoid them because you hate the taste? RJ Marquez has some ways to add more fruits and vegetables to your diet. How'd you do that? Eat your green vegetables. That's what my mom is always saying. Well, your mom was right. Really, produce, fruits and vegetables are going to be one of the best things that you can do for your health. The Harvard study found those who ate five servings of fruit and vegetables per day had lowered their risk of dying from heart disease and stroke by 12 percent, cancer by 10 percent, and respiratory diseases such as COPD by 35 percent. So how can you make sure you're getting enough fruits and veggies into your diet? First, start early. So at breakfast, you could throw some veggies into a smoothie. I also like to puree vegetables and put it, sneak it into some sauces or putting them into soups. A serving size is typically measured as a cup. However, when it comes to leafy greens, you'll need three cups of leafy greens to equal one cup of vegetables. Here are several examples of what five servings look like. Break it up between breakfast, lunch, and dinner. It's definitely doable. Keep in mind the maximum benefit is found at two servings of fruit and three of veggies. Researchers say anything more offers no extra benefit. One more thing, not all fruits and veggies are created equally. Leafy greens are better for you than starchy corn and potatoes. RJ Marcus, KSAT 12 News. 642. Things are starting to pick up on the roadways. Let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos. That's right. We're getting ready for a busy Memorial Day weekend, and we're taking a look around our city, and things are looking pretty quiet right now, but as you said, things are picking up. We've actually spotted a crash that's happening here off the southbound lanes of 35 at Ritterman. You can see that traffic has been building up there for a few minutes now, so something that people are going to want to be cautious of. Uh, this could impact your commute as we get ready to start this holiday weekend, so just be prepared uh, that this crash may still be there, and you want to give first responders plenty of room to get that person where they need to be safely. Taking a look at gas prices, if you're going to be fueling up and heading out the door for this weekend, take a look. Bear County average gas price right now, 261. If you're around the state, 
272 and around the country 304. So pretty good right now. You may want to fuel up if you're getting your day started early and get on the road. But of course, you're going to want to buckle up safely. Take a look here at Trans Guide. Things are picking up at Loop 410 at San Pedro. And as we've been saying throughout the morning, uh, you're going to want to be extra safe. TxDOT has launched their campaign ticket. Click it or ticket, and it's going to run through June 6. It's just an initiative to get people to buckle up and be safe on the roads as we get ready to start this summer holiday. That's right. A good reminder. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you, Stephen. All right, folks, stop what you're doing. Take a look at this yeah. connect picture. <laughs> yeah, you want to find a friend with a pool anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and the dogs are going to get in the pool, and then there is the other dog. You're going to need a bigger pool. Loretta Lynn was at the pool. She thinks she is a large dog. No, Aww. it is a donkey. But I love that. I mean, the dogs they just play fetch. Okay. Yeah, everybody what, likes the pool. What the, the donkey fetches like the dogs do. Hmm. I, I don't out. know about that. I had a dog years ago. You said that's your dog size, Mark? Yeah, that's, see, that's normal lab size, and then there's treatment <laughs> size. My dog used to just inadvertently drop the ball in the pool. It's like, oh, I better go in and get it. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anyway, it's a uh, yeah, it's good pool weather. Warm and humid starting off this morning. That hazy look out there and 76 right now, 78 in Castroville as well as Stinson and dew point temperatures. When you're getting into the 74, 75, literally that is window dripping, you know, wet towel, however you want to describe it, fog up your glasses, kind of humidity around there. And then with all that humidity, heat index readings later on today, temperatures are going to be in the, well, here in town, we're looking at the upper 80s, but it'll feel like the low 90s and feel like the low hundreds down to the southwest. So definitely take it easy. Lots of water. All right. We are going to be seeing a few showers starting to move into the area later on this evening. There could be one or two of them even late this afternoon up in portions of the hill country. And then uh, we'll start to see more of these showers and thunderstorms working their way down here in the overnight hours. Some heavy downpours can be expected with this and potentially a couple of strong to severe storms. Most all of that is going to be done by say about sunrise tomorrow morning. A few more showers, uh, maybe a thunderstorm throughout the day tomorrow. Not really a great chance. You can't completely rule out a stray shower then on Sunday, um, even though now this tends to, again, broad brush things, just one or two of them scattered about around the area. And same thing on Monday, just a stray shower here or there. Then we get into the middle part of next week, and we're going to have some better chances for some rain, and that'll be Tuesday, also into Wednesday, probably even lingering into Thursday. As far as the severe threat, We've got the slight risk out to the west, two on a scale of one to five, and the marginal risk, would, which would be a one on a scale of one to five. High winds and hail, again, are going to be the biggest threats with this, and that's going to be later on tonight and into the wee hours of tomorrow morning. So the forecast today, going to keep, I think, a few more clouds around than what we've had the past few days. Some folks will see a, a lot of sunshine, 83 for a high, excuse me, noon temperature, and then a high up to 88. Normal high, average high is 90, so in that ballpark. And again, a little bit of rain starting later on, probably again up to the north first of all, and this is going to be about mm, dinner time, late afternoon dinner time, and then in the overnight hours. And some of those storms may be strong, potentially severe, a couple of heavy downpours. Most of that is going to be out of here, it looks like, by about sunrise, then a lingering shower thunderstorm in the afternoon. Stray shower Monday, to, excuse me, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, better rain chances. We're ending the month of May and starting June in the low 80s. That is very nice. Uh, Almost 10 below normal. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, we've spent the entire morning and we're going to spend the day saying goodbye to our Paul Venema, who retires from KSAT 12 today. Uh, do you have a favorite joke or memory of, of Paul, Mike? Oh, gosh. I just again, in some of the times when, when things got really you know tense or something like that, mm -hmm. he would always just sort of lighten the mood. You know, just one of those little just little, little things and just to, to chat with him you know i've known him for gosh how long have i been here 26 years something like that so uh you know mentor friend you know watching him um when he was on the field with his son when his son graduated from the naval academy uh -huh. and he was posting pictures of yeah. that i remember that when and he was it was like such a proud dad. Yeah. Yes, proud His moment. son Jake is a U.S. Marine. Favorite memory or joke about Paul? Uh, okay, yeah, so what was cool, one time I got to go to the courthouse and with 
Paul uh -huh. because we were I think we were covering something or two different cases. It's like you were with, with a rock star, I, right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. It was like I was with a rock star. People opened doors <laughs> for us and of course he was treated as a rock star with much respect. Of course he deserves to be treated that way but uh, what's interesting too though is but when we would show up like when Paul was on vacation uh -huh. everybody's like where's Paul? Where's, Where's Paul? Paul? <laughs> I'm here. Like, is he hiding back there? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, but uh, yeah, he was, uh, he said, he sat a few deaths down yeah. for me. And, you know, he would just, he's so funny. My real quick story, uh, I went to Luke Bach with a camera guy one weekend. And um, Paul was obviously not with us, but we knew Willie was performing. I was like, well, I wonder if Paul's just his name will get us in the door to talk to Willie. And guess what? It worked. Yep, Seriously? Of course. We, we got, of we got course. in. Paul, yeah. He's like, where is Paul? I was like, well, he's not here. But <laughs> Willie, do you mind if we talk to you? And he said, no problem. Well, we're going to so, we're going right. to be hearing that a lot. Paul's, where is Paul? Paul's name is yeah. good as gold, yeah. even with somebody like Willie Nelson. 649 on your Friday, about 76 degrees. A Memorial Day weekend is here, and several retailers are offering Memorial Day deals tomorrow on GMSA. We're going to tell you where you can save big. And outside with live cam, see how things are looking out there. More of the same for sure. You're watching GMSA. Paul Venema, congratulations on your retirement. Um, before I wish you well in your retirement, I just want to say thank you so much for being an amazing colleague and an amazing friend. You are a true icon, a legend, and a San Antonio treasure. Best of luck in retirement. We love you. Good Friday morning coming up here on GMA, the busiest travel weekend in more than a year. And you know it is happening right now. We will tell you about the most hectic times to hit the road and the airports. Is the TSA really ready for this spike in travelers? Well, the Secretary of Homeland Security is going to join us live as the return to normalcy goes into overdrive. We are also expecting the biggest crowd since the pandemic began. It's set to gather at the Indy 500 this Memorial Day weekend, so we're going to have the latest on what that looks like. That and so much more, including BTS, coming up right here on GMA. A walk on the west side overnight turns into a life-threatening experience for one woman. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. She told police she was stabbed by a man who tried to get her to have sex. The police found that woman overnight in the 1200 block of Culebra Road. From what they say, she suffered serious stab wounds. They say she was stabbed repeatedly in the upper body and was in critical condition when they found her. The attacker already was gone, though. The woman who's in her 30s told officers she was walking down Labor Road near Zarzamora when the man asked her for sex. She says she tried to run from him, but he chased her and stabbed her. The only uh, description that police have shared with us about the man is that he was in his 20s. Reporting from downtown Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Well, after an incredible 47-year run, our Paul Venema calling it a career. He's joining us live today on GMS 8 9 to talk about some of his most memorable stories. We want to wish him the best and look for that coming up today at 9. Don't forget, you can share your well wishes, too. We have a virtual card you can sign and add a special message to Paul Venema online right now at ksat.com. And, of course, we all have lots of good things to say about Paul. He's an awesome person, and, you know, we're, we're looking forward to seeing him in the studio. I, know, I can't wait to hear more about his uh, retirement plans, too. Too. Yeah, but for now, let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos. Well, congratulations to Paul. Just really quick, I've only met him a few times. We're like ships in the night since I've been here at KSAP, but such a nice guy making everything very easy as, as far as the transition go. But if you're going to be heading out on the roads here in the next few minutes here, let's take a look at Transguy. Things looking pretty smooth right now, but we have been keeping a very close eye on this crash here. That 35 and Ritterman looks like it's impacting traffic a little bit there, but it may be uh, resolving pretty quickly here. Inbound time's looking pretty good right now. 27 minutes from 281 to downtown San Antonio, 24 minutes on I-10 coming in from Bernie. It is warm. It is humid out there this morning, just like it has been the past couple of days and 76 right now, actually up a little bit with these temperatures this morning and throughout the rest of the day. We'll make it up to 84 at noon, 88 for a high temperature, and uh, we will have a few showers and thunderstorms trying to develop around dinner time and then thunderstorms tonight and in the overnight hours. Some of those may become strong, potentially severe. 
uh, especially out to the west. And then over the next few days, uh, a couple of showers, thunderstorms throughout the day tomorrow, maybe a stray shower Sunday, Monday, better rain chances next week. Highs only in the uh, mid to low 80s for the long Memorial Day weekend. Paul Benema in studio from 9 to 10 this morning on GMSA. That's right. You're not going to want to miss it at 9. We'll see you back here in a little bit and have a great weekend as well. Happy Memorial Day.